Brandon here, aka April Waters, and I'm here with my second NBA video of the day. I love making these videos, guys. I love vlogging, doing challenges, and pranks, but these videos, this is my natural habitat. I love making NBA videos, so I'm going to go right in with the biggest winners of the 2016 NBA Draft. Now, hear me out. There's a lot of winners from this year's draft. So I'm gonna break it down with winners and then huge, big time, extreme winners. We're gonna start off with winners first, okay? First of all, this draft was crazy. First two picks, Simmons and Ingram went just as expected. And after that, holy crap, that's all I'm gonna say. We're gonna start off with the, you know, the winners and then we'll get to the ultra winners at the end of this video. So first, I like what OKC did. Some might peg them as huge winners for trading Ibaka for Oladipo. The 11th pick in the draft, Sabonis out of Gonzaga and Ersan Ilyasova. And I do think they won that trade, and I think that was a really nice move for them. I think it improves their team, makes them a better team. But at the same time, Serge Ibaka was part of that big three. Sure, he wasn't happy and he was kind of declining, which is why I still pegged the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder as winners in this year's draft. But I still liked Ibaka for them. But nonetheless, you get Oladipo, who only keeps getting better every single year. Fits nicely with Westbrook. He can't shoot as good as they'd want him to, but that athleticism in the backcourt is crazy. So OKC, winner number one from tonight. The San Antonio Spurs. Let me ask you, does this sound familiar? The San Antonio Spurs got a steal in the draft. Does that sound familiar? Because it should. The San Antonio Spurs, they just let these prospects fall into their hands. Somehow, some way, they groom them, and before you know it, boom, star player. So uh, they got Deontay Murray, and uh, he, this dude, late first round, number 29, the Spurs got a steal, they won. The Clippers, they only had one pick, but I love what they did. Bryce Johnson from uh, North Carolina, this dude can step in and play right away. He's, he, he, he's going to a playoff team, So and that's... For someone who can come in and contribute right away, he doesn't have that high of a ceiling. He pretty much is what he is. He's 23 years old, but that's what the Clippers need. They're not fighting for a playoff spot. They're not going to be in the lottery. They're trying to win a championship, and I think he can help them not secure the ring, but, I mean, he'll help more than a than a, than a thon maker or a dragon bender. So, uh, also, you have the Lakers, who... Uh, I mean, they won. Brandon Ingram, whether they took Simmons or Ingram, they were going to be winners. Uh, Brandon Ingram steps in and automatically the best player on that team. He's coming. I think he's going to average close to 20 a night as a rookie. Lakers won in the draft. The New Orleans Pelicans. They got a nice uh, power forward, Raw Chegdiel out of uh, Kansas. But Buddy Heald, he fits perfectly with that roster. They need a shooter. They needed outside shooting. They needed either a shooting guard or a small forward. And who do they get? They get Buddy Heald. What? He's ready to play right now. You have Anthony Davis. You made the playoffs the year before last, and you missed the playoffs last year. So you needed someone who, I mean, Buddy is not, his ceiling isn't that high. He, I don't want to say he is what he is, but he's more mature and more, uh, you kind of know what he's going to be. But that doesn't matter for the Pelicans. They're trying to get back into the playoffs. You pair him with Anthony Davis. And honestly, like, you won't hear that many people say this, but I can't wait to watch the Pelicans next year. Buddy Heald and Anthony Davis, along with Drew Holiday. Maybe they keep Tyreek Evans too. So, uh, I like what they did. Next winner is Minnesota Timberwolves. Chris Dunn. He didn't want to go to Boston or Phoenix, but you have the assumption all along that Boston was probably going to take him at three and trade him. And if not, the Suns were going to take him at four and try to trade him for Jimmy Butler. Instead, he falls right to Minnesota. And hmm, who's the head coach there? Tom Thibodeau and... I mean, Chris Dunn and Tom Thibodeau, match made in heaven. That's all I'm going to say. I think Dunn is happy. Minnesota's ecstatic. They won. Um, the Detroit Pistons, they took Henry Ellenson. And although he's not going to be a rim protector, he's not going to throw down big-time dunks. He's a stretch four. He's a shooter. Pistons only had one pick. This is exactly the type of guy they needed. He was supposed to go maybe 9th, 10th, 11th. Instead, he falls to 18. Pistons got a nice pick there. The Chicago Bulls, Denzel Valentine. I mean, what can't this guy do? He could shoot. He could pass. He could rebound. 
he, his athleticism make his defense kind of shaky, but he's an okay defender. Denzel Valentine goes 14 to the Bulls. Um, yes, they could have taken a point guard after trading Rose, but Denzel Valentine, I mean, Valentine, like... <sighs> I think Bulls fans are really happy with him. No, he's going to be nice in Chicago. Like I said, his ceiling isn't as high as other prospects. I think he's 22 years old. He was a senior. But he could do everything. Imagine Draymond Green in a six-foot... Uh, how tall is Valentine? 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. He could come in. He could play shooting guard or small forward. And I think he fits nicely with the Bulls. Now we're going to go to ultra winners in this year's draft. First, you're going to start off with the Memphis Grizzlies, who... They took Wade Baldwin at 17. I saw Wade Baldwin as high as number 10 in this draft. Maybe 11. Not many people had him falling past 12. And a ton of people had him going 14 to Chicago. Memphis got him at 17. Um, Mike Conley hitting free agency. Memphis, you know, getting up there in age. getting a, Being able to get a point guard with Wade Baldwin. I think that was... A steal for them. And then, Zach Randolph is not the youngest player on the court anymore. Marc Gasol, who they might be looking to trade if Mike Conley leaves. So who do you pick up for one of your bigs as a possible replacement? Or maybe even to groom behind Zach Randolph and Marc Gasol? Hmm, lottery pick Deontay Davis. Except he fell all the way into the second round. So what do the Grizzlies do? They snatch him up. They traded with Boston. They took... Hold on guys, give me a second. I need to make this video public really quick. Oh, man, I look ugly as shit in that thumbnail. Um, Yeah, so they trade. The second Deontay Davis falls into the second round, they trade with Boston. I'm not sure why Boston made that trade. So Memphis picks up a big man of the future who could have been a lottery pick. They get him in the second round, Deontay Davis out of Michigan State. And then they took um, uh, Wade Baldwin. So if Mike Conley leaves, they already have a replacement. Or he is big enough to play next to Mike Conley if he resigns. So... I think the Grizzlies come out as winners. Next, you have the Denver Nuggets, big-time winners. Um, Jamal Murray himself, and I know this might be a little biased. Like I said, he said it himself. He was the best player in this draft. That's what he said. John Calipari, who coached him, Calipari, who coached him at Kentucky, said he could be the best player in this draft. I don't like Murray because he's kind of positionless. You don't know if he's going to play the one or two. You don't know how his defense is going to be. But there's no denying that the dude can score. He might lead all rookies in scoring. They get him at 7. He could only as high as 3, 4, or 5. They get him at number 7. Then they take Juan Hernan Gomez from overseas. And then they took uh, Malik Beasley. I like what Denver did. They got three prospects who... they they Denver's going to look nice next year. I think uh, Jamal Murray actually compliments Emmanuel Moutier's game super nice. Um... Denver, big time winners. Now with the Philadelphia 76ers here, taking Ben Simmons number one is already guaranteeing you a spot in the winners category. But then they take two international prospects, Timothy Luau and, uh, excuse me if I butcher his name, Furkan Korkmaz. Both of those guys could have went from 11 to 15, maybe 16, maybe 20. They were both projected to go 11 to 20. Philadelphia gets both those guys in the mid-20s. They take one at 24 and one at 26. I love what Philly did there. First of all, you have Okafor. You have Nerlens Noel. You have uh, Joel Embiid. You have Dario Saric. And you took power forward Ben Simmons. Number one overall. You have absolutely no need for a big. They could have traded these picks. Uh, they could have went point guard. There weren't really any point guard. I would have liked to see it them go after Tyler Eulis. Thank God they didn't. But he would have been nice there. But what do you do? You go after two wings who are falling in this draft. For whatever reason, they fell from their original draft position. And they get Korkmaz and Luau. And uh, both of those guys could ball. You kind of have this, uh, oh, international players have bust potential. But why not take two? So if one of them does bust, the other one is most likely going to pan out. I like what Philly did there. Those are value picks. Um... Supposed to go higher than that. They get them at 24 and 26. On top of that, you get Ben Simmons. I think Philly's shaping up. Maybe not next year, but I think they're looking from turning trust the process into playoff basketball sometime soon. The biggest winners of the 2016 NBA draft 
I don't care if you say I'm biased. I don't care if you think I'm biased. Just because I'm a Suns fan. The Phoenix Suns. They won this night. Are you kidding me? You could think I'm biased. Or you can read any article around the around the internet that chose the Phoenix Suns as winners. And I guarantee you, you go to any NBA draft article, winners and losers, you'll find the Phoenix Suns on the winners list. I looked at all the grades they got from every single expert, every analyst, every reporter. Everyone gave them an A. Some gave them an A+, plus, some gave them an A-, minus. maybe someone gave them a B+, plus. but everybody loves what the Phoenix Suns did on draft night. And let me give you my thoughts because a bunch of people were waiting. I love what the Phoenix Suns did on June 23rd. I love who... Guys, let me tell you this. The Phoenix Suns entered the night with 4th pick, 13th pick, 28, and 34. Nobody wants 4 rookies. No one's going to take... Unless you're the 76ers. Nobody's going to take 4 rookies in one draft. At number 4, for weeks, maybe even months, okay? The Phoenix Suns are guard heavy. So I told you guys multiple times. I tweeted it. I've, I've answered comments. The Phoenix Suns were not going to take Buddy Heald. They don't. They had no use for Buddy Heald, okay? They weren't going to take Jamal Murray. They also were not going to take Chris Dunn unless they planned to trade him. So they were debating, debating, debating. You already have Alex Len and Tyson Chandler at center. Guess how many power forwards they have on the roster? Zero. Mirza Toledovic, free agent. John Luer, free agent. Markeith Morris, traded. Amari Stoudemire, rotten knees. Channing Fry gone. They have zero power forwards on the roster. They have the number four pick. They were debating, should we take Marquise Chris or should we take Dragon Bender? Debating, debating, debating. I read half the front office was split. Half of them, we want Marquise Chris. Half of them, we want Dragon Bender. They couldn't decide. The number four pick comes. They're on the clock. Both of these guys are available. Who do they take? They take Dragon Bender. Okay, what does that do? Marquise Chris said he kind of shrugged and said, oh man, because he wanted to come to Phoenix. Chris falls to five. Nobody takes him. Marquise Chris falls to six. He doesn't get picked. He falls to seven. He doesn't get picked. He falls to number eight to Sacramento. He's from Sacramento, so you know it makes sense. Sacramento's going to take him. That's his hometown. The Phoenix Suns get on the phone. Hey, Kings, bitch, listen, we want Marquise Chris. So what do the Kings do? They send Marquise Chris. They send the number eight pick to Phoenix. You're expecting maybe Eric Bledsoe goes to Sacramento. You're expecting, if not Bledsoe, then for sure Brandon Knight gets sent to Sacramento. What do the Suns do? These motherfuckers work their magic. They gave up number 13, number 28, some second round pick five years from now in 2020, and rights to Bogdan Bogdanovic, who just turned down a chance to come to the NBA this year, so he might not even play in the NBA, for number eight. The Phoenix Suns essentially gave up number 13 and 28 to move up to number eight. They, gave, they didn't give up any player on their roster. Marquise Chris and Dragon Bender welcome to Phoenix. The Phoenix Suns took the two best big man prospects in this draft outside of Ben Simmons. I mean, Dragon Bender, let me give you this. I didn't like the pick. I think Dragon Bender has really, really, really high bust potential. He has a big chance to be a bust. But at the same time, there's experts, there's scouts, and there's a reason he was a top five prospect all year. All year, you look at every mock draft, Bender at 3 to the Celtics, Bender at 4 to the Suns, maybe 5 to the Timberwolves. All year, he was a top 5 prospect. The Suns pick him. And then you have Marquise Chris, who was another top 5 prospect. They get him at number 8. The Phoenix Suns got the two best big men in this draft outside of Ben Simmons. I should say big men prospects because you don't know how they're going to turn out. They have zero power forwards on the team. So they take two power forwards and... The coach said that Dragon Bender, Marquise Chris, they're both mobile, agile, and versatile enough to play small forward, power forward, or center. So they plan on playing them together in the future. Together. I love what the Phoenix Suns did. They ended up with two top five prospects in this year's draft. And then, hold on, with number 34 in the second round, they take Tyler Eulis out of Kentucky. First of all, I'm watching the Kentucky Suns next year. Brandon Knight, Eric Bledsoe, Archie Goodwin, Devin Booker, Tyler Eulis. Five Kentucky guards. Five. If you're a BBN, if, if you're a Kentucky fan, you got to love the Phoenix Suns. Anyways, Tyler Eulis, first round pick for sure. 
questions about his size, his height, maybe an injury. Dropped him to number 34 at the Suns. What do the Suns do? They snatch him up right away. This kid is Devin Booker's best friend. They dorm together in Kentucky. They talk to each other all the time over Twitter. Devin Booker was at Tyler Eulis' house when he got drafted because Eulis didn't attend the draft. He was at home. Booker went crazy when uh, Eulis got drafted to the Suns. Um, Devin Booker was, you know, tweeting hints to the Suns that they should take him. He retweeted some things about Tyler Eulis before the draft. The Suns didn't think he would fall to them at 34. Um, Devin Booker has been tweeting ever since the draft pictures of him and Tyler Eulis. Like three, four pictures. They are ecstatic. Also, uh, Tyler Eulis is going to come in and run that second unit for Phoenix coming off the bench. I love what the Suns did. They ended up with Dragon Bender, Marquise Chris, and Tyler Eulis. I give them an A+. Plus. Clearly the biggest winners in this year's draft. You could call me biased, or you can go ahead and look at every single website on the internet who dubbed the Phoenix Suns as the big-time winners of this year's draft. I love it. I love it. I don't think they're going to be a playoff team next year, but at least we have prospects. We have assets. We have players who we can look towards in the future. So uh, those are my winners. OKC, San Antonio, Clippers, Lakers, Pelicans, T-Wolves, Pistons, and Bulls. And then you got the big time winners, Phoenix, Philly, Memphis, and Denver. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, next video is going to be the draft's biggest losers. Let me clear this up really quick because I know people are going to comment. If you saw my tweets or you watched my Periscope, when the Suns took Dragon Bender, I was pissed. I did not want Dragon Bender just because... European prospects rarely pan out. Rarely. So you have Porzingis who panned out last year. What are the odds that two top five international prospects will pan out? But then I thought about it. This dude was a top five prospect all year. All year. Scouts, experts. They all had him going top five in every mock draft. And then I sat back and I was like, you know what? I'm just a fan. What do I know? There's scouts and experts who get paid millions of dollars for their job for scouting talent. So although I'm not that high on Bender as I am on Marquise Chris, I'm going to trust the experts. I'm going to tr trust the scouts. That's their job. That's their career. They get paid to do that. So they know more than me. Okay. So yes, I was pissed when we took Bender, but at the same time, I'm just a fan. What do I know? There are people who do this for a living. They know more than I do. So let's hope for the sake of myself and for the Suns that Bender ends up being a big time player. Hey, last time Last year at this time, New York Knicks fans were booing the Porzingis pick. So we'll see what happens with that. I just want to clear that up before you guys. Oh, I thought you hated Bender. Now you like him, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to give him a chance, okay? So we'll see.